Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So obviously I'm not going to be addressing price too much um, as this is going to be scheduled a little bit later, but um, what I will say is that this market is looking like it's holding up pretty good. Looks like the overall structure is having that nice integrity to kind of hold around these major support zones. Um, I've been addressing this for the last couple of days, talking about the overall macro views of this entire market. Honestly, when we talk about the current structure of this market, I think that it is printing a little bit of a better, you know, bullish pattern. Um, but today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some other news happening around this market. And that is financial institutional demand growing. So, um, as we do see a lot of demand around DeFi, NFTs, the metaverse, stuff like that. Um, obviously, we know Web3 has become a major selling point buzzword for a lot of you know major names out there. But ultimately, as we do see this market kind of mature into what it's supposed to be, which is not a highly speculative market uh, built around hype and you know just kind of meme coins, if you will. Um, as we do kind of mature into a utility driven market where we will see institutional demand growing, we will have regulations, enterprises will be launching major use cases. You know, I, I really want you guys to understand that the main focus here is those major utility gems that do have true utility. Um, a lot of people kind of say, hey, you know, name me uh, an asset that is doing, you know, actual things right now that's actually being utilized. Honestly, there's only a few that I, I've actually seen that are being utilized. XRP definitely is one of them. You know, it has settled a quarter of the on-demand liquidity, you know, volume of 2021, which was, you know, $10 billion in total, not the 25%. But, you know, when we take a look at that, that is a pretty significant amount. I mean, obviously, I know that it's not going to change, you know, the price of XRP because it is a minuscule amount on the overall, you know, view of this current market. But it is still a significant amount. And it does show you that XRP is a true, you know, utility gem. It is being utilized. Uh, so, again, it proves the idea that XRP is going to be here to stay, especially when you look at regulations coming into the space. I've never had a single doubt about the SEC lawsuit and where it really kind of is headed. I do believe that XRP does have clear cut and dry regulatory clarity by the end of this year. Now, as we do talk about this, let's talk about a few things that is happening around, again, the XRP ledger. Uh, we do see here from Allbridge, we are excited to announce that we have successfully integrated XRP ledger with technical support from Ripple X Dev. This integration will enable us to bring many unique DeFi assets to the XRP ledger. Now, I think that this is perfect because as we talk about, you know, the DeFi space, guess what is a crucial area to focus on from financial institutions? DeFi. DeFi has been exploding for years now. Uh, even going back to the summertime of 2020 uh, itself, it was major in terms of DeFi summer. We've seen a lot of gems kind of breaking out into massive highs. I know Chainlink was one of the main ones that a lot of people were kind of focused on. Um, but honestly, as we do really kind of see this market really mature, I think that this is going to be one of the categories within this market that does get a lot of the spotlight. I think NFTs in the metaverse and stuff like that are going to be pretty cool areas too. Um, I just think that DeFi in general is definitely going to be one of the areas that does get a sort of legitimacy factor around it and kind of be printed in a better picture um, because I think that this is going to be the area that a lot of banks and also governments really kind of focus on, especially as we do see, you know, like stable coin issuance and things like that. Uh, so I definitely think that this is an area that we should all be paying attention to right now. Um, but I also think that this is very cool in terms of what Allbridge has done with the XRP ledger. And we do see here today, Allbridge has successfully integrated support for the XRP Ledger, a decentralized public blockchain built for payments, as you guys are probably all aware of. Uh, we do see here that this latest integration allows Allbridge, uh, which has processed more than $5.8 billion in transactions to date, to link the XRP Ledger with number of EVM and non-EVM compatible chains, including Solana, Terra, Near Protocol, BNB, Chain, Phantom, and more chains supported by Allbridge. This does allow for streamlined, you know, sort of acceptance and adoption of the XRP Ledger on a lot of these other 
other multi chains. So I think that this is great, and we do see you know Allbridge be became the first bridge to connect XRP Ledger with the expansive DeFi ecosystem. This you know, or the integration started with the XRP Ledger allowed us to deeply enhance our cross chain expertise and offer a truly unique solution to the market. Our end goal is to establish an interconnected cross chain environment. So again. This is very good, especially as you know, we do kind of look at this entire market from a overall viewpoint on, hey, we do need interoperability between all of these cross chains because at the end of the day, you know, this market is not going to be fully adopted and utilized properly without interoperability. And I've always said this even with quant when we take a look at, you know, like the legacy, you know, infrastructure of banks really kind of being able to utilize crypto, like we still need inter interoperability. It's a crucial area to focus on. So this is very interesting. This is very good. And honestly, I think that a lot of people are kind of undermining how bullish this actually is. This is going to allow a lot more use cases to be, you know, developed. Um, and it's honestly going to unlock a ton of potential, especially for the XRP ledger. Now, also, I do want to get into the idea on massive, you know, again, financial institutions and where Ripple is positioned. So we do see here. IPID launches in India. One of three senior board members, Costa Peric, leads Level One Project Gates Foundation, chairman of Mo Moha Loop, sorry, Foundation Board, on board of Interledger Foundation, and also the creator of SwiftNet. Their employees all have backgrounds at Ripple uh, customers, and here we have it. So, um, this is a full on breakdown. Uh, shout out to, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. You guys can go check him out on Twitter. Making global payments as easy as text messages this is from IPID. Again, it's really kind of streamlining payments in general, making them simple, secure, and seamless. Or so, if you will, frictionless. Here's that streamlined process. Really kind of shows you guys a little bit of a, you know, sort of interesting dynamic, especially when you look at things like the XRP Ledger. Um, but we just hear. Or sorry, not XRP Ledger, RippleNet. Uh, and we also see our global team has represent, uh, representatives in Singapore um, and a ton of other areas as you guys do see here as well. I'm not going to try to pronounce all of them, but we do see our, And there's that picture again. FinTech firm IPID launches in India, seeks to make cross-border payments easy. Again, here you guys have it. Uh, when we take a look at the cross-border payment market, honestly, there's only real one major winner that I, I will say has you know, a major percentage within that market. I, I, I do see Ripple with XRP grasping a large percentage of that market value. And that is a $156 trillion market. Now talking about Moha Loop, the, the interesting thing here is that they're focused on interoperability as well. Um, I believe that they're gaining this through um, Interledger actually. And if you guys don't know, Interledger protocol is developed by Ripple. Um, but we do see here, you know, the Moha Loop Foundation's open source software can be used by organizations to build interoperable digital payment systems that enable seamless, affordable financial services between individual users, banks, government entities, merchants, mobile network operators, providers, and technology companies uh, connecting the underserved with the emerging digital economy. And do you guys understand what they're doing here? This is financial inclusion. Guess who else is focused on financial inclusion greatly? Well, Ripple. And the funny thing is, is guess what? They are a sponsor member. Next to some major names here. The Rockefeller Foundation, Monetary Authority of Singapore. I mean, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I mean, these are some high-tier names, guys. Uh, so pay attention to what Ripple is doing. Also, I want you guys to understand that their mission here is to increase financial inclusion by empowering organizations, creating interoperable payment systems to enable digital financial services for all. This is why I do believe that Ripple, uh, with, of course, Interledger Protocol, is allowing for a lot of the interoperability to be unlocked here. And uh, it really is focused on banks and just governments and things like that in terms of regulatory bodies. So this is a huge connection for Ripple. Now, as we talk about regulations and we talk about institutional you know, adoption, we did see this from Ashish Birla. More institutional adoption of crypto equals bringing real-world, non-speculative use cases like payments, real estate, equities, gaming, etc., plus new liquidity venues, lower volatility. Next few years are going to be absolutely pivotal for crypto's integration into the global economy. Honestly, when we take a look at this, I really do believe that we are at the turning point in the market where we will start to see major institutional demand growing around crypto. And that is when we will see again, those major pivotal use cases being unlocked. I think that we are at that, you know, sort of, you know, it's almost at that point where this market is at almost that maturing stage where we will see again, the true value being unlocked by these utility gems. 
And uh, Ripple themselves is also saying, you know, Cindy Young talked about why financial institutions should leverage crypto and its infrastructure for payments and how regulation is key to further adoption. Again, when we take a look at regulations, everyone's always saying, you know, regulation is going to kill crypto. Regulations are not good. Regulations are this. Regulations are that. I want you guys to understand that when we take a look at regulations, it's it's going to be good in a sense on you know, if Ripple wins this lawsuit, we will see regulatory clarity coming for XRP, but we will also see Ripple really unfold within, again, the regulatory frameworks of this market. We've already seen them create a regulatory framework around crypto. So they will unload that, make sure that they usher in regulations for this space that are not only innovative, but also non-stifling in terms of this you know, technology. So again, regulations could be a major, you know, key that unlocks the doors for massive amounts of financial institutional, you know, capital that will streamline the crypto market's overall market cap to trillions of dollars. Now, as we do see this, guess what? 75% of financial institutions plan to expand support for cryptocurrencies over the next 12 months. Now, this goes back a few months ago. This goes back to January. But we did see a major demand around financial institutions within crypto. And we do see here they are preparing for an anticipated surge in the usage of cryptocurrencies and competition among financial institutions angling to underpin businesses. Uh, cryptocurrency payments is likely to be fierce. Now, I want you guys to understand that when we talk about financial institutions, what company is perfectly positioned for this area well not only i i shouldn't say just in general for that but also think about it like this right when we talk about this they're talking about developing seamless transaction methods and things like that guess what's coming in 2022 that's right you guys guessed it the liquidity hub this is perfectly focused on financial institutions from ripple side this is going to be huge. This is focused on, again, providing liquidity and streamlined payments. And it, we even see here, you know, enterprises will use Ripple Liquidity Hub to easily and seamlessly provide their end customers with the ability to buy, sell, and hold digital assets at the best possible prices across a range of venues. This is going to be huge, especially as we do see the demand evidently more and more growing around this area. And again, regulations are going to streamline use cases like this and streamline capital to flow into this market. I am so excited for the future of this space because we are at that pivotal stage within crypto where we will see, again, institutional demand continuing to grow and projects like XRP, right, continuing to be ushered in and, and really kind of, you know, change the entire landscape of crypto entirely. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to the notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.